Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to Make Monday. Today I just want to talk a little bit about regulators. I get asked once in a while, what's the best kind of regulator to use? And yeah, I don't want to know, or I don't really want to go out and say there is a best kind of regulator to use. I know the ones I prefer. Uh, but first, let's look at a couple that typically come with the small home welding machine uh, welders that are set up for MIG. This is a pretty typical uh, enclosure when you buy a small MIG welding machine. You have one dial. Essentially, it's going to tell you how much, how much gas is left in the tank. And then the other dial is the flow meter. And this is what you set for the proper flow for the gas that you're using or the project you're working on. And I think we mentioned for MIG welding earlier on uh, at one point that typically you're going to be between 20 and 30 cubic feet per hour on your flow rate. Okay. This also is a, is a regulator that is included in many small machines. And you can see it's a little bit different style. There's only one gauge. And the gauge here is the, uh, the content of the bottle, how much gas is left in the bottle. This is the flow meter. Rather than having an analog meter, this has a little steel ball. I don't know if you can see that rolling back and forth there as I tilt the uh, thing. But the, the flow of gas causes that ball to rise. And the, the stronger the flow, the further up it's going to go. And it's graduated, so you can set, again, in the same case of MIG welding, between 20 and 30 cubic feet per hour. Between the two, I pre kind of prefer this one, mostly because you know I'm not a real trusting soul, and you got this little ball floating around on a, on a, on a gas stream. That means it's there, because if there's no gas, it's going to drop. Now, even though these, these meters work really, really well, uh, sometimes I think, well, what if the, if the gauge or the dial is stuck? You know, maybe, it's, maybe I'm not getting an accurate flow. Uh, I tend to believe, and I don't know that there's any factual basis to this, but I tend to believe that these are a little bit more accurate. Now, since most of the time the meter is going to come with your small welding machine, uh, you might just say, well, this is the one I got, and I can just stay with it, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I, don't want to, I do want to address a, another little issue, because not all little welding machines come set up for MIG. There are some small machines that, are come, that come set up for flex cord welding. Now, that doesn't mean you can't MIG weld with them, but typically what you have to do is buy what they call a solenoid kit. The solenoid turns on the gas flow and shuts off the gas flow when you pull the trigger on the gun. So you'd have to buy this kit and install it in the machine. So now that's step one. That's one issue that you have to deal with. The second issue that you have to deal with then is now you're going to have to have a gas bottle and you're going to have to get a regulator. So then you have to go out and buy a regulator because most of the time you're not going to get a regulator with the solenoid kit. So then you can take a choice of which you prefer the most. And then we've got one other little issue we can deal with, because most home hobbyists are going to weld with CO2. And both of these regulators, you can tell by the end that they have here, you see it's kind of a rounded, bullet-shaped end on both of these. They both attach to very many different types of gas mixtures, except for CO2, which is the most prevalent home welder gas bottle. So if you're going to do a CO2 issue, then you also have to get a CO2 adapter. This adapter allows this type of end to fit to the type of end that you have on a CO2 bottle, which instead of being a, a female threaded connector, is a flat to flat connection. So you can't connect one of these up to a gas to a CO2 bottle without a CO2 adapter. So that would be an additional purchase. So if you really, realistically, if you think you're going to want to do some MIG welding eventually, you're probably better off buying a machine that's already set up for MIG welding. If you've already bought a machine, you're not out of luck. You just have to go and follow the steps to get a, a solenoid kit, a, a regulator, and a CO2 adapter if you choose to use CO2. So not a whole lot of mystery to it. Just, just little things you need to know. You're not, you're not completely out of the picture if you have a small MIG welding or a flex cord welding machine because you can still adapt it for uh, MIG welding, okay? All right, well, keep tuning in to MIG Monday, and we'll see you again.